Well, hello. <laughs> I'm John Morris. I'm here on behalf of the Working Class Fishing Podcast and Morris Fly Company. And today, as you probably saw in the earlier photos, we're talking Utah killer bugs. The killer bug was originally Frank Sawyer's pattern, right? Well, uh, it was made to mimic a shrimp, and turns out it mimics pretty much everything. So the Utah killer bug was made in Utah with a different yarn rather than Chadwick's or a Chadwick's imitation. It's made with Jameson Shetland Oyster. I have a 30-foot card here, and this is probably, I don't know, five or six inches that we're going to use. We're using 3.3 <clears throat> mil tungsten beads. This is gold. Typically, I'd use black nickel. No, I just ran out of black nickel. I'm using Firehole 633 wide gap size 14s. And I've already got one loaded in the vise. You're going to want some pink thread or some white thread that you can color pink. All right. So you're going to dress your hook normally. I'm about halfway through my shank. I'm going to pop that off. All right. I'm just a little bit past my hook point now. Kind of hard for you to see, but hopefully uh, you'll be able to follow along. There's several ways to tie this in. I could wrap back up and start my tie-in up here, but right behind my bead, or I could start my tie-in down here on the edge, on the, uh, excuse me, the bend of my shank. I'm actually going to tie in from the top, and I'm going to wrap, wrap, wrap down into the bend of my hook. And then I'm going to use covering wraps back up behind my bead. So there is a reason I prefer behind the bead for that tie-in. So what I'm doing right now is I'm pinching behind my bead and then letting off and then creating more of a body behind it. I'm going to rotate this bead so the slot is up so it doesn't have a weird taper or look to it. So all I'm doing is I'm creating this thread down behind the bead to keep the bead stationary. You can use wire wraps, right? You can use wire wraps all the way up from the bottom up to the top, and it'll keep your bead secured. All right, if you've got a rotary vise, and you're tied in, and you don't go the wrong way. <laughs> if you don't go the wrong way, when you're uh, turning your material. I'm just not going to use my rotary function right now. All right. And then you're just going to palmer this, dude. I am going to use my rotary, but not my bobbin rest. And you're going to do concentric wraps. And what that means is you're going to wrap touching but forward or rear, touching but not overlapping. Okay. You're creating this really fine taper, and then you're going to start wrapping back. I'm doing about five wraps back, and then I'm going to start wrapping forward again. You want to keep this tight so it gives it that really clean look that you're looking for. And then I'm going to finish off <clears throat> with these wraps behind the bead. All right. Securing wrap there. Securing wrap there. And... We're secured. Okay. Now I'm going to snip free this excess. Just not much. I'm going to give it a nice pink collar behind this bead. Pretty big collar, actually. If you look at the original killer bugs, they have this really big pink head on them. And since I'm using a bead instead of doing this, even like the traditional Utah killer bug style, which would be wire body under wraps, I'm doing two three-turn whip finishes to finish this off. That was probably five or six. So I lied. <laughs> but you can get by with just two three-turn whip finishes. Like if you're doing dry flies and stuff like that, instead of using... Uh, head cement and stuff on them. You just keep it all, oh natural. All right, that is a Utah killer bug. It's really like a midge taper when you do it behind a bead. Those kill it, dude. Killer flies. Here's half a dozen right here. 
and I'm John Morris. Once again, thanks for tuning in, and uh, I guess we'll start doing these every Friday. <laughs> Y'all take care.